Welcome back to Multi Tarantulas 3550. Today I'm going to be reading Wings of Fire to Wingless Quadrant, the first four stories. I'm going to be reading the first one Prisoners. Winglet's number one, Prisoners, right here. I'm going to be reading the entire Winglet, and then next episode we're going to be reading Winglet's number two, Assassin. So let's begin. Wings of Fire, Winglet's number one. Prisoners. This is Pyra, where there are seven dragon tribes. There are seven queens. Then came a great war, a prophecy, a volcano. And after the war of sending succession was over, a shift in the balance of power. Not everyone approves of the new Sandman queen. In fact, the only topic more controversial is the new queen of the Nightwings. Can they hold on their thrones? Should they? In the dungeon of the Sand Wing stronghold, two prisoners await. What? A trial? A mint execution? They're not exactly sure. They are Nightwings, but they not con they cannot go back to their tribe. They are in exile, but they are da dangerous to they are too dangerous to be allowed to return, and yet too complicated to be killed. They hope. So they wait and scheme. Well, one of them schemes. The other one is catching up on sleeping and eating, and they wonder what will happen to them. All they want is access to the most dangerous weapon of all. A chance to tell their own story. They are prisoners, but perhaps that is about to change. For the guard with the scar over your heart, I have been watching you. You are not like the other guards, the bound, scraping, mindlessly loyal lizards who live for your queen. You don't have your own suds. You have your own suds, don't you? You're smarter than the average sandman, and I think I know your secret. Let's talk about it. So it's all down, the one with two night wings in it. I'm the one who doesn't snore. I have no interest in, interest in discussing anything with a night wing prisoner. Whose idea was it let, to let you have paper and ink? You should be interested. You're going to need allies for what you're planning. And when I get out of here, I'm going to be a very useful ally indeed. Assuming assumptions. My queen believes you're going to be in here for a long time long time. True, but she believes she's going to be queen for a long, long time, doesn't she? An interesting silence after my last note. Perhaps I should reassure you to know I set your notes on fire as soon as I've read them. You can tell me anything, my new venomous tail friend. Believe me, Nightwings are especially skilled at keeping secrets. We are not friends. I don't know anything about, I don't know anything about you other than what sees in your prisoner file. Dear Steve, Traitor, kidnapper, ringleader of assassination plot. To be identify, in, identifyingly with fellow traitor, strong wings. On behalf of the Nightwing Queen. Oh yes, certainly sounds like a dragon anyone can trust. She's not my queen. You can't be a traitor to someone who shouldn't be ruling over you in the first place. What might be a, be a sot new pal lately yourself, isn't it? I know something about you, even... Without a file. Sirago, prison guard, schemer, connected to great secret plans. You're not so different, you and I, particularly when it comes to trustworthiness. Just think, if my alleged assassination plot had worked, the Nightwings would have had a different queen right now. Perhaps it would even be me. Well, if it's... Well, uh... Perhaps it would even be me. Well, if... if First, you don't succeed. I can tell you my story, if you give me more paper to write on. Or you can stop by one minute and listen to it instead. But I've noticed you don't spend too much time in the dungeon. Is it the tip-tap of scorpion claws grabbing everywhere? The stench rising from the holes in the floor? The glibbering mad sandwing a few cages down who never shuts up all night long? What is her story? Has she really been here since the rule of Queen Oasis? Or is it that you can too easily picture yourself behind these bars and you know how close you are to joining us? All right, Nightwing, here's a blank scroll. Go ahead and try to convince me that you're a dragon who ever deserves to live, let alone one I should waste my time on. I do enjoy being amused. The dragon ant with no destiny, according to certain other idiots, not according to her. I hatched on an island of smoke and fire, under a volcano that breathed death all day and hit the stars and the three moons at night. 
My tribe was dying. There were fewer eggs every year, and even fewer of those survived to become dragonets. And all of those were starving, along with everyone else. Now, we must keep their secrets well. None of them, the otter tribe, suspect what was happening to us. None of them even knew where we lived. But they knew about our powers of mind reading and seeing the future. And that was what was going to save us. A prophecy. The prophecy. That stupid, claw scraping moon begotten prophecy. Every dragon on Priya probably knows it by heart. Unless you're in, 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 in ignorant rain. Or at least they've heard of the important verse. Five eggs to hatch on brightest night. Five dragons are born to end the fight. Darkness will rise to bring the light. The dragonets are coming. And everyone knows it's about five ever so special dragons who were destined to stop the war and save the world. If you haven't met them, though, you might have noticed they're not all that special. They're kind of sappy and disappointed, don't you think? Especially the nightmare. He's a walking tragedy. You want, you know why? Because it should have been me. I should have been perfect for the prophecy. I would be brilliant at saving the world. I would also have been brilliant at leading the other dragons. Proving the Nightwings are the best tribe and making sure sure things happen exactly as we want them to. Just one problem: I didn't hatch on the brightest night. I hatched two years, two I hatched two years too early. Stupid stumbling moons in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so you know who got to beat all the special chosen Nightwing instead? My little brother. How unfair is that? I wasn't even I was even there when his magical destiny landed on him. Standing next to his annoying egg in her hatchery, talking to our mother. Her black scales gleamed in the firelight as she curled around it, brushing the eggshell lightly with her claws. Take me hunting, I wheeled. I didn't wheel I don't wield anymore for the record. Please, I need help. I keep losing my prey after bud, and I think other dragons are eating it before I can find it again. So we're clear. I don't really need help. I mean I was I was as hungry as everyone, but I couldn't take I can't take care of myself. What I want was Mother to be stopped dripping and boring and for her to leave that egg alone for even half a second. I can't, little one, Mother sighed one of her long scales up in the sky that made her tail flop over. What if something happens to my egg while I'm gone? It's so close to hatching now. What could happen? I demanded. Do you think it's going to roll away, sprout wings and fly off the island, turn blue and pop out a steaming stick? It'll be fine. You're staring at it all the time. Is it going to make any difference? She like, fixed her black eyes on it to on it as if to prove me wrong. This might be the only time I get to spend time with it. The brightest night is coming. Blah, 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 I shouted. This might be the only time you get to spend time with me, too. I could get exploded by the volcano tomorrow. She wins. That's not going to happen, she said. My husband says we have a few more years before another explosion is due. Ha! I said, I bet I get grow, blow up before you take me to the mainland. Remember all those promises you made? Or I should say, all those lies you told me? Fear Steve, you're only two years old, she said. You get to mainland one day, and when your little sibling hatches, we'll have plenty of time to get her as a family. Yuck, I shouted. That doesn't count. I don't want a drooling dragonette following us around. No one else... Uh, else I knew how to put up with this this competition for their parents' attention. Yes, yes. It was unusual. Mother was special. Let's all clap their talents and coon away. Here's why. Most Nightwings don't have two eggs, thanks to our horrible death trap island home. Most Nightwings don't even have, have most Nightwings haven't even been able to even have one egg in that last, I'm not sure, but it's been a really long time. Friend Mighty Claws is the only other dragon that I know of a sibling right now. And I don't see why Mother needed another egg when she had me. It should have been exciting enough that I was hatched. I mean, it used to be. And then suddenly she saw, eee, another egg is coming. Life is so wonderful. And wasn't she proud of herself and obsessed? And wasn't she proud of her? Uh, and wasn't she proud of herself and obsessed with it? It was like she completely forgot about her first perfectly wonderful egg. The perfectly wonderful dragonette that came out of it. I think it was stupid Mauser's fault. If you don't know who he is, count yourself lucky. He was losing his mind around them. Yo, yep, around them then.
yelling at everyone all the time. You did not want to stand behind him in any lava. Just in case, just in case. See, Mazar was trying to make sure some had some. Mazar was trying to make sure someone had eggs that would had to at least near the brightest net. He really wanted some choices for his glorious prophecy. Said he got only one egg with the right timing. One fat, blah little egg that was in the center of Mother's universe. So Mother had just told me no. She couldn't leave her precious boring second egg to take me home. And I was sitting there glaring at it, wondering who I could trick into cracking it for me. It was small for a dragon egg, black color for scales. So basically it looked like an extra lump sticking off Mother's tail. And then we heard the bump, bump, bump of a grumpy talon stomping our way. And in case, and in comes gigantic Mauser, all frowning and portentous as usual. I've come for your egg, Farsight, he said to Mother. Yes, Mauser, not exactly. Oh, good morning. How are you? Nice, green, saphir smelling Mother you have, were having kind of dragon. But then, neither am I, so I can respect that. Mother clutched, clutched, Mother clutched the egg closer to her. Mine? She said, are you sure? I'm like, Mother, Mother waved his wings impatiently at the nearby empty hatchery. Do you see a hundred other options uh, somewhere? He barked. He jabbed one claw toward the only other egg in the cave. This one isn't due to hatch until after the brightest night. Yours is, is, it. Congratulations, you're the mother of the prophesied dragon net. Now hand over the egg. But right now, won't I get to meet my dragonette? Farsa asks. Can we get let the egg hatch here and give it to the town of peace later? She'd grow up with us, and then we could send her to the continent in a few years. Wouldn't that be better to raise her like a real man would? Mother was doing that dragon scene of assuming her perfect egg was a female dragon inside. Wrong! Mauser snorted. Unnecessary. Our genetic superiority will manifest wherever this dragon egg hatches. And when I was I thrilled up that my competition was was I thrilled that my competition is gone gone? Did I welcome did I welcome my mother back with open wings, ready to be her precious beloved to one and only again? I most certainly did not. I didn't want to be duped anymore. Now I know how easy she could drop me. I've seen how shallow her loyalty ran. Maybe if she had begged my forgiveness, but she didn't. It said she moped for ages, and it was boring. You have no idea. So I spent my time and energy on Mauser's instead. He was the one who, you, with useful connections, and maybe, and he was the one who could get me to the continent and maybe into that prophecy. Once he realized how completely Nightwing I am, that's another word for awesome. If you're still in the uptake, Sandy, I followed him around the fortress. I showed up whenever he was lecturing, even if it wasn't to my class. I happened to be there whenever he sent a message to someone. I accidentally ran him into in the island's small patch for, for a forest and constantly drove prey in his direction. In my head, I sometimes pretended he was my father. But did all that work make him like me even one tiny bit? Not as far as I could tell. And did he ever send me to mainland? Not once. Technically, Nightwing Dragon Dance aren't allowed off the island until they are 10. Apparently, we need 10 years of training on how great, on how to keep the tribe's secrets first. But I was great at keeping secrets. And if my doby brother could be off the mainland all the time, I couldn't see why I couldn't at least visit it. Especially once the tunnel to the rainforest was built. It would have been so easy to let me hop through some night and when no one's around. I just wanted to breathe real air and see the stars for a minute. That didn't seem like to act too much to ask. And if I did, over and over again, until Mauser called me a pest and banished me to the dragonet. And I did ask, over and over again, until Mauser called me a pest and banished me to the dragonet dormitory. My point is that I grew up in the most terrible place in Pirates, but it made me strong. Dungeon is nothing in comparison. You don't get to eat every day, and your queen even lets us out to stretch our wings more frequently than I can believe. But I deserve to be free. Everything I did, all my so-called crimes, were the good of my fellow knights. I was trying to find us an ally we could restore power. I was trying to save us from being controlled by the other tribe. I was trying to make sure we had a real home of our own. And if I succeeded, I'll be a hero now instead of those bleeding hearts, dragonets of destiny.
I deserve to be part of my tribe again. And you deserve a queen who cares about them and understands what they suffered, not the teeth grinding mistake they have now. I believe in the separation of the tribes and the importance of maintaining the royal bloodline. If possible, I suspect you do too. One way or another, I'm getting out of here. If you help me, you gain a determined ally who can help you get what you want. If you don't, you'll be just another guard I have to kill on my way out. Fierce I see. Quite a tragic tale. What about your fellow prisoner? Accessory to your, t accessory to your crimes? Is he a Mr. Umber's hood hero as well? Is it necessary to leave him a mischievous plan? Or do you need attempt to leave him here to dis uh, dissipate? Brains and the beast. Strong leads is coming with me wherever I go. Forever. That's non negotable I don't care if no one understands why he's mine. It's my heart. I can stick whoever I want in there. But I'll tell you some of the stories since it is late and I cannot sleep at night anymore. And then there's moonlight pouring in through the small high up windows. Also, I enjoy wasting the queen's lamp oil. And if you were even considering setting me free while keeping him trapped, I will roast the talons one claw at a time. Purpose out, I'll simply betray you to that six claws interrogator who oversees the guards. I bet he'll like to hear about the secret map you've been drawing with the stronghold, or the way you stand in dark corners and whisper to someone who isn't there. I knew Stronghold from the moment I hatched. Also, I did not particularly like him at first. He was three years older than me, but the dragon at the dormitory in the Nightwing Fortress had enough and more space for the smattering of dragon nets in the tribe. We all lived there together until the age of ten. Strong was a notorious mess and possibly the slowest dragon in the tribe. He kept leaving bits of carcasses around the sleeping spot or accidentally stepping on everyone's tails on the way to bed that night. He never spoke in class. It was way to say something boneheaded to one of the other dragon nets. Unless it was to say something boneheaded to one of the other dragonets, who always ignored him. Everyone ignored him. I ignored him. I was too busy and ambitious to make friends. Besides, he wasn't the sharpest claw of a, on the dragon, if you know what I mean. Me. I only remember feeling mildly relieved when he turned 10 and was moved to the adult quarters, taking his mess and his snowing and his stupid jokes with him. I don't even see him again. I didn't even see him again until a few day, months later, soon after my seventh hatching game. It was a miserable day on the island. More miserable than usual. I mean, the clouds were pouring this drippy mix of rain and slit all over us. So it was cold and wet outside, but stifling inside. But all that hashes in the air was sticking damply to our wings and creeping into our snout. So it was felt as if we were bringing a volcano even more than usual. I snuck out of class because I didn't. I couldn't take one more minute of great and glorious Nightwing history where my lungs felt like smoldering sacks of wet paper. The teacher's nearly blind, blind anyway. He didn't even notice me slip out the back tunnel. The hall of the fortress smelled like wet dragon. Gusts of damp winds and splatters of lit kept swirling in through the cracks in our walls, sizzling the coals and turning the air smoky. I was looking for somewhere as far away from the outside as possible, a corner of the fortress that was completely protected, and I saw the mastermind's lab. Mastermind was a science teacher, and the tribe's resident genius. If you believe all the hype about him, I say, if he's such a genius, he will be able to explain... He'll be able to explain the way that dragons can actually understand. Instead, he's the biggest, most made-up words possible, and then slithered back to his lap. Slithered back to his lap. He'll, uh, it said he showed up once a week, blattering up for hours, using the biggest, most made-up words possible, and then slithered back to his lap, leaving all of us even dumber than we were before. He had a whole giant inner room of the fortress for his experiments, and it was well protected from the outside air. Mastermind was obsessed about keeping other dragons from touching his stuff, and maybe I could sit in the corner and, hmm, well, maybe he wouldn't be there. He was definitely there. You've ruined it! The whole thing! Our entire tribe could be wiped out because of your stupidity. Stupidity. I paused outside the door that said labs and tilted my head, listening. There's an enormous crash, and then... Several smaller crutches, and then scrambling talons, and I opened, and I, and the door slammed open, and a briefly black dragon came charging out, flapping his wing wildly. 
And don't come back or I will dis disip you. Alive! Mastermind's voice bellowed as the door swung shut. The dragon flopped over on the floor, painting for breath. Hello, strong wings, I said. Causing disasters as usual, I see. Oh, he said, sitting up fast. Sitting up fast. Oh, uh, hi, fierce thief. What did you do now? I asked. I knocked a bottle of uh, something in onto a vat of uh, something else. He said he scratched his head, looking mournful. There were bubbles and some weird gas. I don't know. Something, something. Times he explains the experience to me, but then that just makes me more confused. Kind of an idiot mud when you move going to India in the first place. I observed. You plus breakable things and unstable chemical compounds. Clearly a bad idea. That's why I said he protests. I didn't want this job. It was Mother's idea. And she's friends with Princess Greatness. So that's, you know, they made it happen. But I told them the dumbest Nightwing ever had shouldn't be Mastermind's assistant. There were a few more ominous question sounds that the, uh, from behind the door. I realized Strong Wings was giving me a funny look. What? I demanded. I was kind of hoping you'd disagree with me there. He said, about what? I asked. About me being the dumbest Nightwing who ever had. Oh, I said, sorry, I would have. I was thinking of anyone dumber. He actually laughed, which was intriguing. More Nightwings would, would try to counter your sarcasm with more sarcasm, as though every conversation is a competition to see whose wit is more built, bit biting. No one ever stops to acknowledge that someone else is funny. Ah, oh, well, he said, perhaps they're right. I'll probably be less trouble here than crashing around and leaving obvious trails in the rainforest. You've been to the rainforest? I narrowed my eyes at him. What was it like? Tell me everything at once. I glanced at the door to the lab, then he glanced at the door to his the lab, then bared his teeth at me in an awkward way, which turned out to be his version of a smile. Or I could just show you. That's not funny, I snapped. I may be half your size, but I can still bite you. I'm serious, he protests. I can distract the guard and take you through. No one will ever find out. And if they do, what are they going to do to me? Give me a worse job than this? Pretty sure there isn't one. I can think of much, much worse punishments. I have personally witnessed things involving lava or an extra week behind radiations. But, uh, but I didn't bring them up. If this crazy dragon wanted to take me to the rainforest, I was going to talk him out of it. Fine. We should find out who's guarding the tunnel, I said, striding off down the hall. Oh, uh, right now, he said. I mean, oh, yes, right now, of course. That is when we are going now. Yes, that's what I meant. I ignored his mumbling. I have found that all interactions work better when you, when you pay attention to things that are actually said to you instead of the things you think they're trying to say. Should be deadly claws, deadly claws. They, I think, he said, catching up to me. He's quite sharp, I said. What's your plan? Um, he said. I glared at him. You do have a plan. I do, I do. I got it. Uh, don't worry. He paced along beside me, flicking his wings and burrow into his burrow. I never stood this close to him before, but now it struck me that he really was nearly twice my size. He was unusually burly for a starving nightwing. You could still see his ribs, but they were big ribs, attached to a big back and massive shoulders. He would... Probably grow up to be even bigger than Browser one day. I like that stuff. I like walking down the hall next to, next to, intensely a small lumbering mountain. It kind of made me feel as if I had something that would shield me from the lava if the volcano did explode all of a sudden. We left the fortress and flew over the molten landscape in the rain. My wings were instantly soaked and chilled in the bone, but I didn't care. We were going to the tent. We were going to the rainforest. I, have, I hovered outside the cave before, but I'd never seen it in. No dragon nets anywhere near the secret tunnel. That was the rule. Did I care about breaking it? No, I did not. It was a stupid rule. One that would apply to other dragon nets, but not to me. I was at least as clever and trustworthy as Mr. Fat Wings over here. Besides, the nice thing about doing it this way was that he'll get in trouble, not me. Well, so I saw it anywhere. Uh, wait here, he said, steering us behind to the beach. My town sank into the wet, wet, black sand and I squinted through the downpour as he flew up to the cave. A few moments later he peered at the entrance and waved to me. That was weird. I haven't seen deadly claws come out. Turns out that's because Strongman's idea of distraction was to sneak up and clonk someone over the head. Deadly claws was lying unconscious in Kyle Cave next to a small fire of fire in front of the tunnel entrance. I regarded him a moment. He didn't wake up for a while. He won't wake up for a while, Strong rumbles. I see, I said. 
Did he see you? Uh, he said, no, I don't think so. He was poking the fire. Well, it would be idiotic to waste this opportunity. I climbed over Daddy Claus and stepped into the tunnel. Hang on, Strong Man protests. I'm taking you to the rainforest. That means I go first. Scooch over. I snorted a small flame at him, spread my wings, and flew into the darkness from him flapping along, rumbling behind me, up and up, around the side of the way, and then the chill fell of the air. The light and light shone up ahead. I burst out into the sun and warmth and breathing. You won't understand it because you grew up with all of that. Most dragons don't spend a single moment of their life thinking about breathing, but for nightlings, it's an ongoing, horrible experience. On the volcano, you suck, you suck in particles of ash with every breath. Lungs always feel like they're on swallowing, they're on, on, they're on fire. The inside of your throat is scraped like you've been swallowing giant pieces of eggshell. I guess we're used to the smell of sulfur and rotting prey and smoke, but once you leave it, once you notice it, it's awful to go back. Stepping into the rainforest was like plunging my snout into a cauldron full of plants. I was so overwhelmed by the sound of my no nose that I didn't register what was in front of my eyes for the first few minutes. I just breathed and smelled and smelled and breathed and breathed. At last, I was able to focus on strong in his face, his black eyes peering into mine, a wild assault of greenery erup erupting behind me. You look enormously pleased with yourself, I said sharply. I know this would do it, he said, tucking his wings in with a self-satisfied nod. I've never seen you smile, but I knew if I brought you here, I glared at him. Does that mean you're some kind of genius? I'm sure every dragon reacts the same way. Now my senses were adjusting, and I could also hear the sound of the rainforest, the rushing wings of the tree, the chatter of golden-furred monkeys overhead, the fair way of calls of birds, the nearby river burbling contently to itself. I could feel the humming heat of the sun melting into my scales. Yes, that's true, Strongman said. I want you to be the one to see your face. I stared at him suspiciously. Why? Because why? Because he found her, his claws stabbing nervous, nervously on the dirt below us. Uh, because you're well, you're just you're the only fierce, you know. That was true. I am the only fierce thief. I don't need dotting parents to tell me I'm special or brilliant and ferocious. I don't need a prophecy to make me unique and important. I am fierce thief. But it's unusual to, for someone to notice. Hmm, I said, taking a step closer so I could eye him up and down. You know, it's uh, up here to be joking or teasing. In general, I am not fab of sentiment sincerity. In general, that is not a nightmare trait. But it turns out there are some dragons who can pull it off. Well, one. There is one dragon who can talk to me like that without getting bitten or stabbed or bitten and stabbed. Want to go flying? He asked. And eat mangoes and jump in a pool of water that is not gray, cold gray sludge and, or so full of salt that it scratches, all your scratches burn like fire? I did want to do those things, but I never pictured doing them with strong. Of all dragons, I don't want him to think I was a dragon who... Just lower all my defenses the moment I felt sunshine on my scope. All right, I scoffed. As if you're fast enough to catch a mango. Oh, I'd like to see that. He started laughing again. Also, I wasn't sure why this time. Dragons who might be laughing at me usually have an unpleasant encounter with my claws before they draw their next breath. But for some reason, his laughter didn't make me want to stab him in the nose. So we flew, and we swam, and we ate more food than I knew existed in the world. And I did not care even one tiny iota when we returned to the tunnel hours later. At the sun, was starting down toward the trees. And I found glowering Mauser and ferocious dead claws waiting for us waiting for us. I wanted to go to the offensive before they could start yelling. Oh good, I have something to say, you you convenient lion snake. I stopped the Mauser as we landed. Strong just jumped and sidled away from me. Then two steps closer to me. I could feel his gaze melting along the side of my face, shocked or anxious or impressed. I didn't know which and I couldn't be bothered with him right now. Do you know how many rules you've broken? Mauser Bella, ready to launch into my, into his prepared rant. How dare you? What did you just say to me? I called you a convenient lying snake, I spat. Why can't we just move here right now? Why would you keep us there, that miserable island, a moment longer when this is here? 
ready and waiting for us. I spread my wings at the tunnel forest around me. Don't question your elders, Mazo fumed. You have no idea what the risks are. Or what else have you done? What risk? I shot back. The Ravens? Are you afraid they're going to throw bananas at you? It will probably take them months to even notice we're here. That was before we discovered what Ravens could do. Obviously, it wasn't in any of the schools. We couldn't find out until about a year later, when a dragon called Vengeance got a demonstration all over his stupid face. No big deal, for the record. It was hideous before the encounter with that Ravens, too. It's Queen Battle Winner's decision, said Mauser, and she decided we're not ready. Would you like to take it up to her? That shut me up for a minute. No one had seen the queen in years, but she spoke through Mauser and her daughter. And in the, in the fortress, we could feel her eyes on us all the time. She knew everything, and if you were unlucky enough to catch her wrathful attention, her punishments were always swift and served. And don't forget the ice wings, you arrogant dragonette. Daddy Claus growled. If we slaughter in and make our home here, how long will it before they find out where we are? We're safe on the island, but once they find us here, they'll swoop down to kill us all. That's right, Mauser hissed. Clean plan will give us the powerful ally we need to protect us in our new home. So we stick to the path of the prophecy. That's the only way for us to do this safely. And you could have jeopardized all of it, Daddy Claus added. You could have been seen without even realizing it. Camouflage Raven could have spotted you and be reporting back to the queen right now. So what if you had been ca or what if you had been captured? Mouser just snarled. Captured by Ravens? I rolled my eyes. Terrifying. You'll be sorry for this, he hissed. I'll make sure you never step claws in the rainforest again. Not until we move here. No one was going to see my despair, I told myself fearing. Don't let him know what it feels like that your eyes are being ripped out. Don't let him see that you care. I called my claws into the ground as if I could root myself there, so no one could ever drag me away. Quietly, I inhaled, trying to drag the scent of mangoes and moss and river rocks deep into my lungs, trying to imprint this place on my scales forever. But it's my, it's my fault, the strong wings blurted suddenly. This was my idea, not hers. Ha! Mauser shot a blast of smoke out of his nostrils. Fierce if it's beggaring on about coming here for years. We know what she's like. There's no need to take the fall for her, whatever your name is. I'm telling the truth, he insisted loudly. I told her I'll bring her here. I knocked out the Claus. Sorry about that. Then the Claus snarled at him. You wouldn't be here if it weren't for me. He said, she wouldn't be here be here if it weren't for me. Punish me instead. He was telling the truth, but he didn't have to. I was clearly decided not to shove the blame onto him. And clearly, Mauser had decided that he wanted to believe, too, based on what he always said of me. So your sister's suggesting we ban you from the rainforest instead? Mauser said mockingly. Yes, the strong wings. Don't be an idiot, I said at the same time. I wasn't supposed to see the place for three more years anyways. You're old enough to put on hunting duty or assigned to be a spy mission here. Don't throw that away for nothing. You're not nothing, Strong Wings said with an odd catch in his voice. Or maybe his slowness had reflected on me one day. The risk he'd taken wasn't about providing his bigness or enjoying a thrilling trip outside the rules. For Strong Wings, this was about me. He saw me and had seen me for a while. Also, I had never noticed before. Like certain dragons, if Strong Wings was given a choice, he would choose me. I wrapped my tail around his and lifted my chin definitely at Mouse. Well, you can punish us together, I said. We don't care. And he did, by the way. And it wasn't anything worse than regular life on the island. We had some terrible extra assignments for a year. And we did them together, which made them less terrible. And when we figured out a smarter way to sneak out the rainforest without getting caught, well, I figured it out and let him come along. Anyway, there's, that's a story, long story to illustrate a simple point. Strongwings is my dragon. He will do anything to keep me alive. He is the only dragon I trust in all the pirates. And I'm going to take him anywhere without... Well, I'm not going anywhere without... Put that up just now and smoke it. Fiercely. You are a complicated dragon, Nightwing. Suppose I could help you, as you presume. What is it exactly that you... What you you, you could do for me? How it should have been. Alright, Sarago. Send a guard with a scarl on your heart. And this is basic logic, so it wouldn't strain your brain too much to follow along. Imagine for a moment that my plan had succeeded. Imagine that I'd taken my companions into 
Going to the stronghold instead of stopping for help in the scorpion. Their idea, and a terrible one, as I should have guessed it would be. Imagine that I end up in Burns from instead of in prison. Now picture me giving her a silver platter, exactly what you want. The location of the prophecy dragon there. Can you see in your mind the army of Sandwings en route to the rainforest? Me and Burn flying in the lead like the avenged wings of night, and they swooping down to set history right? Who would could have stopped us? The Ravens are no warriors. They would have rolled over and begged for mercy the moment they saw Sand and Claw. The other gnomes would have joined me in the heart, and they would have helped burn and return. So what would the world look like now if my plan had worked? Queen Burn of the Sands, Queen Fiercely from the Nightwings. The prophecy fulfilled the right way. The dragonettes, all dead. Such a sad story. But sacrifice the wives of the heroes, right? Well, maybe not all did. I could show mercy to my little brother, even though he betrayed us. No need to waste the night. I'm sure he could be rehabilitated eventually. And I would have saved my life. And I really would have saved my tribe. Me, the dragon with, not with no destiny. I'll be a hero after all that. But the dream not dead, my friend. We can still make this happen. Even if it was a slightly different cast of characters. Listen, you're clearly a smart dragon. Well, let's say smartish. I bet you support Queen Burn, but I also bet you have someone else in mind for the phone now. From the way you're slipping around, taking notes, and setting everything, I bet you're quite the useful dragon inside dragon for somebody. So be even more useful. Give yourself and your secrets, plans, more allies that you that can really help you. It's very simple. We don't like our queen. We don't like your queen. Together we can eliminate them, and then our tribes can go back to ignoring each other forever. But first, you have to get us out of here, as soon as possible. Please, I'm getting sick of smelling sandwings and eating dried camel every day. Fiercely. Did you read my letter? Why haven't you responded? Sirago, I am not a patient dragon. If you do not help me escape, I will tell someone what you've been up to. To be blunt, I am sure the current sandwich queen would be very interested to hear about the mysterious spy among the guards. Very well, you maddened Nightwing. Your story has warmed my heart. Or perhaps I just need you to go away and stop sliding increment notes under your door. So, midnight tomorrow. Be ready. There, we finished Winglets number one. Prisoners in 40 minutes. Okay, that's long. I hope you guys enjoyed Wings of Fire Winglets. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Peace.